Hello and welcome to this video. In this video we're now going to look at uniform fields. So we've seen um, radial fields and electric uh, fields and we've seen that they follow a very similar um, uh, structure to the gravitational fields. Um, most of the equations look the same. Um, you follow the same procedure to derive some of the equations. But the applications of them are obviously very different. We said in gravitational fields that uniform fields are just an approximation that we can make. When we zoom into a field, we can see that um, it looks uniform because you can't see the bigger picture. But in electric fields, we can actually make uniform fields. If I set up some sort of circuit where I have um, a circuit and I have a, just a metal plate, and this metal plate is gonna be connected to some power supply that power supply is going to be connected um, to the first plate and the second plate. Okay, so this, and I'm going to put here the something quite different. I'm going to put here that instead of a battery, I'm going to have this. Now this is my AC power supply. AC meaning alternating current. Okay, now this has to be alternating current. Okay. The reason it has to be alternating current is because if I'm going to put a current through here and I've got a gap between these two plates that's just air, this is basically an open switch in a DC circuit. Current won't flow. We'll look more at alternating current and what that actually uh, behaves like and why it changes um, things in circuits more in the magnetic fields when we're going to look at electromagnetic induction. How do we produce these currents? What do they actually do? But for now, you just need to be aware that in order for um, a uniform field to be created, it needs it requires two parallel plates or just two plates um, with an alternating current across them. It doesn't always have to have one being positive and one being negative. You can have just one being positive and then the other one being grounded. Uh, it just means you have some potential difference, which means that the potential across this top plate might be plus 50 volts and the potential across this bottom plate uh, might be minus 50 volts, which means your potential difference between the two is 100 volts, right? You have a potential difference here. So delta V is 100 volts, okay? Now, with uniform fields, these will vary very differently from uh, radial fields. The properties of uniform fields will change because our equations that we have for all the radial fields are dependent on things like um, the radial distance from the center of the point of charge. But in this case, we no longer have just a single point charge. We have multiple charges that are laid out in a line, and then we have a second line that's also laid out. Um, and we're saying that we're taking this whole line of charges, and this is gonna produce its own field. And then we're gonna use that Instead of saying we're centering it on a single charge and we've got a radius around that single charge, we now have a line where we have a distance between these two lines that leads to an electric field. Now, the first thing we can do is look at the examples of how does force behave? How, do, how would a force act on a, a positive test charge in here? Well, we know because logic tells us if this is positive, it's going to be repelled from the top plate, so it's going to move towards the bottom plate. Okay, um, But how do we put an equation on that? We've said that we have an equation of uh, Coulomb's law that is F is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 Q2 over R squared. But, like we said, we've only actually got one single charge in here and the rest of this is a group of charges, so we can't just couple them all together and say Q1 is that, and then Q2 is the test charge. Um, so what we have to do instead is refer to the other equation, which is F is equal to EQ, where Q is the charge of this positive uh, test mass in here, and E is the electric field strength in a uniform field. Then we have to ask the question, how do we define the electric field strength of this? Surely we know that we've written this electric field strength down as one over four pi epsilon naught uh, Q1 over R squared. And so this is again radial. We need a center of this 
and so we can't actually use this equation for the electric field strength of a uniform field. So instead what we do is we say another kind of uh, unif uh, another kind of definition of uh, the electric field strength is that the electric field strength is the potential gradient. We're saying it's the change in potential divided by the change in distance that you've gone through to cause that change in potential. And we do have a potential difference here. We've said already that we have a delta V of 100 volts, and we'll actually have the distance between these as D, um, which will then mean we could actually define a, rate, a uniform field, electric field strength, as being V over D. Okay, and this is what we do. We say that the electric field strength is um, V over D. Now, V is going to be consistent the whole time. You're still going to have the same potential difference across this. And D is also going to be consistent. These plates aren't going to move together. And the reason we can call this a uniform field is because the electric field strength, the electric field strength is the same everywhere in this field. Everywhere in a uniform field. Okay, this is why it's called a uniform field, because the electric field strength is the same. When we look at radial fields, we end up with the electric field strength uh, changing as we change the distance. But in this case, because we're ending up with a constant um, density of field lines, we end up with a um, constant electric field strength all over this plate. Now, We'll look at a use of this being capacitors uh, in, a, in a separate series of videos. But for now, I just want to look at a common sort of question that they tend to ask quite a lot. And that is, what would happen if we were to put a charge and we were to fire it through these plates? Okay, so let's look at what happens there. So we say that, let's set up an example that I have this pair of parallel plates here they are a distance of, uh, let's keep it to D um, apart. Let's say that the, this one is positively charged and this one is negatively charged. And this whole plate has a length uh, L. Okay, so I'm going to do this whole thing algebraically. You can try this for yourself and put numbers in. Um, one thing I would be careful of is the fact that when you use your own numbers, you can tend to get huge values because um, it, sometimes the you, it's not quite obvious what a like a acceptable value for the distance between two metal plates is um, and the potential difference between them is V okay now let's say we start off with an electron traveling through here um, with a speed of 1 times 10 to the 6 meters per second Things like this are used in um, particle accelerators sometimes, although it's usually magnetic fields, but sometimes we can accelerate um, particles using electric fields with things like uh, switching the polarity of um, certain parallel plates. It will cause a particle to be ac accelerated through um, something or even could be used to separate things. If we wanted to separate positive and negatively charged particles, we could put it through a plate like this. Now, let's actually say that this length L is gonna be, um, instead of doing it um, algebraically, let's actually say that this plate has a length of say 10 centimeters. Okay, this is 10 centimeters long. And let's say that this distance between them is uh, five millimeters, so five times 10 to the minus three meters. And let's say the potential between these plates, um, so V is equal to, and uh, let's go with 50 volts, for example. Okay, now they'll split this up into a few parts of the question. Um, so we're gonna do it step by step, and we're gonna say part A is, um, if this here is an electron, how long is the electron in the uniform field for? So how long is it between these plates? 
And the key with this is going back to AS mechanics and then saying, well, if I've got a um, particle body mass that's moving horizontally, we know the force of this electron as soon as it enters here is going to be vertical, right? And we know it's going to be up because this is the positive end. So the electron is going to accelerate upwards. And the horizontal velocity is completely separate from the vertical velocity. The horizontal component isn't going to change. So we can say there's going to be no acceleration horizontally as it passes through here. There will be acceleration vertically. So what we're going to say is uh, how long is the electron in the field for? We know it's traveling at a speed of 1 times 10 to the 6, and it's traveling a distance of 10 centimeters. We basically are just going to say velocity is uh, the displacement over time. That leads to the time being the displacement over the velocity. So the time is therefore the displacement, which is 10 centimeters, or 10 times 10 to the minus 2 meters, divided by the velocity, 1 times 10 to the 6. And this gives us a time of 1 times 10 to the minus 7 seconds. Okay, so this is a pretty fast moving uh, electron here so we've ended up with uh, a very short amount of time that it's going to pass through because it's 10 centimeters it's traveling at uh, one megameter per second a million meters per second it's pretty quick okay so the second thing then would be uh, to ask what force is going to act on the electron what is the magnitude of the force what is the magnitude of force acting on the electron okay and now to do this we know that F is going to be equal to EQ for a uniform field we can't use Coulomb's law anymore because we're not working with radial fields so then we're going to say that we know E is the potential difference divided by the distance between the plates so we can end up with F is equal to V Q over D this is a very common thing that you'll arrive at. You can usually put these two together. And we know V is 50 volts. We know that Q is the charge of the electron, so that's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. And D is the distance between these two plates, so that's 5 times 10 to the minus 3. And we put all of that in a calculator and we get 1.6 times 10 to the minus 15 newtons so it's a pretty small um, force acting on it for a pretty small amount of time the thing that it will then proceed on to this is mostly a um, the difficult part of this question is us being able to then say what is the velocity that this electron exits uh, the plates with so at what velocity uh, does the electron leave the plates okay now in order to do this we're going to revert back to this idea that um, we can end up with even if this force is due to the electric field we can still say that a resultant force can relate to its acceleration by F equals MA so we're still going to use F equals MA and we're going to say that since we know the electrical force um, we can say that F equals MA, which therefore leads to the acceleration being F over M. Okay. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to work out a velocity and I've been given a displacement, a time, an initial velocity, so I know already I'm going to be working towards some sort of SUVAT. Okay. So now I need to calculate the acceleration. So acceleration is going to be the force, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 15 divided by the distance that it's traveled, which is just 10 centimeters. So this, oh sorry, the mass um, that it's traveled through, the mass that the electron has, uh, which we should know is 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. And this gives you an acceleration of 1.76 times 10 to the 15 meters per second squared. So this is pretty high acceleration actually because the mass of the electron is so small now i'm going to scroll down for a minute here so we're then going to say um, we need to continue this down here so we're going to list the suvats 
and we're going to say that the distance that it's traveled we know is 10 centimeters so that's 10 times 10 to the minus 2 although this is now going to be vertical right this is a common mistake that everyone makes they say this is the distance that it's traveled through um, so that must be the displacement but actually we're looking vertically and vertically through these plates we don't know how high it's going to go we know it's going to follow some sort of curved path because it's going to end up being forced upwards but we don't know the vertical displacement so we can leave that one blank we do know the initial vertical uh, velocity is zero meters per second because we start by saying that this is traveling completely horizontally our final velocity is what we're trying to work out so we'll leave that there we know the acceleration is 1.76 times 10 to the minus or to the positive 15 meters per second squared and we calculated the time in the very first part of the question to be 1 times 10 to the minus 7 seconds then from here we have v u a and t so we can say v is u plus a t u is zero so v is just equal to a t so v is equal to 1.76 times 10 to the 15 multiplied by 1 times 10 to the minus 7 so we end up with a velocity of 1.76 times 10 to the 8 meters per second now the reason i said don't make up your own values or be careful with your own values is because um, even by knowing uh, roughly what these values are actually expected to be i'm going to end up with something that's very close to the speed of light okay so this is how particle accelerators work we just use um, potential differences um, that we can actually handle to try and make quite strong electric fields and so we end up with um, this kind of uh, velocity on the same order as the speed of light now we have the um, vertical velocity but this isn't the velocity of it this is the vertical component of velocity if we wanted the actual velocity we know horizontally the velocity hasn't changed so this is still 1 times 10 to the 6 the vertical velocity is now 1.76 times 10 to the 8 and we need to work out what is this velocity, the actual V. And sometimes they will also ask for the direction, in which case you just want to work out the angle um, to the horizontal that it is traveling through. Now, in order to work out the actual value for V um, from this point, it's just Pythagoras' theorem. So V squared is equal to 1 times 10 to the 6 squared uh, plus 1.76 times 10 to the 8 squared and then v must be equal to the square root of this whole thing so 1 times 10 to the 6 squared plus 1.76 times 10 to the 8 squared and this gives you a velocity of 1.76 times 10 to the 8 meters per second now this isn't surprising uh, because we can see that the velocity of uh, the vertical component is much bigger than the velocity of the horizontal component so we're basically saying that the horizontal part of this is negligible because this is a hundred times bigger um, so it's pretty big this isn't going to affect it by too much so this is the actual velocity that it leaves at because this is the um, velocity at in the direction that it's moving not just its uh, horizontal and vertical components this is the combination of both of them if we then wanted to calculate the direction that it's moving in, we then need to use some trigonometry to calculate this angle. And we say that actually tan of theta is the opposite over the adjacent. So that is 1.76 times 10 to the 8 divided by 1 times 10 to the 6. Now, we can already expect this uh, value of theta here to be pretty big. We know that it's traveling much quicker in the, horizontal, in the vertical direction the horizontal direction so we're going to end up with a very big value of theta so theta is actually going to be the inverse tan of 1.76 times 10 to the 8 divided by 1 times 10 to the 6 and this gives us 89.7 degrees so it's basically completely vertical like we said the horizontal component of velocity is going to be negligible through this so we end up having 
basically zero um, horizontal component. Okay, so this is a common question. Um, so just to recap what we've said over this entire video, we started off by looking at um, the application of a uniform field being um, the potential difference. We can then relate a force uh, by saying it's just EQ, where E we defined as being the potential difference between the two plates divided by the distance between them. And we said that the electric field strength is the same everywhere in a uniform field. This is an important point. Then we said we'll have a look at an example question where we have an electron being fired through a pair of parallel plates. We calculated the time that it's going to be in the plates for, the magnitude of the force on it, and then we calculated the velocity uh, as it leaves the plates by doing some simple SUVAT um, and then Pythagoras to combine the two velocities of the horizontal and vertical components. So uniform fields doesn't stop here. This is just the beginning. There are more applications of it. The biggest one is capacitors. Um, and we're going to follow on this video with a series of videos explaining what capacitors are and how they work. Thanks for watching.